Hi there, my name is Chris Harris, I'm from AdamyTutors.com and welcome to the video on summarising complex science in solution. So in this video we're basically going to go through about nine different types of metal aqua iron, their shapes and um, their colours as well and we're going to look at what happens to them when we add small amounts of hydroxide and ammonia and excess amounts of hydroxide and ammonia and also with carbonate compounds as well. Now, you do need to check your exam board syllabus to make sure that you are learning the right colours. Not all exam boards need you to know all of these. Uh, some want you to know bits of this table, some want you to know all of it. So you have to check with your syllabus first. Um, you don't need to know all of these, like I say. But I'm just going to go through them. I'm going to point to uh, different parts of the table as well and re make reference back to other videos that I've done with further explanation as well. Okay, so we're going to start with the first one. These are our metal aqua ions. Now, this is where we form uh, solutions. So we take our transition metal compounds and form them into solutions. And you can see I've split it up. And the first three rows here are two plus ions. Uh, and these ones are three plus ions. And these are just additional two plus ions just at the bottom as well here. So I've grouped them all together. Um, now, all of these form aqua ions. Uh, but when we add small amounts of hydroxide and ammonia, we actually, uh, these are actually treated as bases uh, when we're adding small amounts. And so therefore, they will remove protons from the uh, water ligands that surround them. If you notice that all of them will form a precipitate uh, and all the two plus ones, so the three at the top and these three at the bottom, uh, will all form, you can see here, H2O4, OH2, and they're all the same. And the colours, cobalt will form bluey green precipitate. Uh, the copper will form blue, iron 2 will form green precipitates, uh, the manganate 1 will form a brown precipitate, uh, the nickel is green and the zinc is white. Now, um, it's really, really important that you need to know that these form precipitates because they are not charged, so therefore they're insoluble. Now, if you want to know more about the acid-base reactions of these, we just click on the link below and you can have a look at the video and find out why they do that. Um, if we look at the 3 plus ions as well, you can see, again, these are not charged as well, except these are H2O3, OH3. So these form a neutral, uh, neutral complex. And again, just very quickly, uh, the chromium forms a green precipitate, aluminium is white, and iron 3 is a brownie orange, a bit like rust colour. Now, it's important to know, if you look at these two, which is zinc and aluminium, these both are not transition metals. So therefore, they don't form coloured compounds, and that's where they form white precipitates. As with their solutions as well, they're colourless, so they don't have any colour to them. Again, if you don't know why that is the case, you don't understand why some of these are coloured, I have done a video looking into coloured compounds. We so just click on the link below and you can have a look at the why these ones are coloured as well. Okay, so if we just go further on to the excess hydroxide, then when we add excess, what we're doing is we have uh, ligand substitution. Uh, now, with some of the, a lot of the complexes, there is no further change. Um, so, for example, the cobalt, the copper, and the iron 2, or the 2 plus ions, they have uh, no change there for them 3. And the chromium 3 plus does, it forms a green precipitate here, but then when we add excess, it re-dissolves the precipitate and it goes back into a solution again because we've reformed a charged complex. It's the same with the aluminium as well, except the aluminium doesn't go all the way. We have a partial substitution there. Uh, with the uh, iron 3 and the manganese and the nickel, it's the same as uh, with a small amounts. There's no further change there. And then with the zinc one, again, just like the aluminium, it only does a partial substitution and we only have H2O2. But again, a colourless solution is formed because it's dissolved. If we come on to the excess ammonia, uh, excess ammonia, uh, again, will act um, as ligand substitution when you add excess. Um, so for the cobalt, it forms a yellow solution with a hexaamine complex here. Um, the copper one is one of the funny ones where it doesn't substitute fully. We get partial substitution. That's really important to know. Um, and this forms a dark blue solution, again, because it's charged. Uh, there's no change with the iron 2. It's just the same as what it was here. Um, with the chromium 3+, plus, it forms a purple solution. We get complete substitution here. It's the same for your aluminium, it's the same for iron 3, and it's the same for manganese 2 as well. Uh, so there's no change there. With the nickel one, again, we get full substitution, NiNH3, 6, 2 plus, you form a blue solution. And um, with this one, uh, with the zinc, again, we get partial substitution, 
a bit like with the copper one as well. Now, if you're not sure um, why uh, these form or uh, why these behave as uh, in excess, and you want to know more about the reactions, just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video there, as well as uh, why this about the shape of this one in particular, about the copper one, because it's got a funny distorted octahedral shape. Okay, and just looking at the last one, this is reactions with carbonates. Um, now, I'm pretty sure this one's uh, unique to AQA, so if you're doing AQA, you definitely need to know these ones. Uh, but cobalt ones, again, we form, if you look on here for the two plus ions here, you notice for the two pluses, these form um, simple carbonate compounds. You can see there's complete ligand substitution here. All the waters have been kicked off, and we formed uh, bog standard metal carbonates. Uh, these are quite um, weak acids, so therefore we get um, a full ligand substitution with the carbonate. With your three plus ions, which are these three here, um, you see actually the reactions are slightly different when we add a carbonate to them, and that's because the carbonate acts as a, um, acts as a base. And these three plus ions are stronger acids, so therefore you get um, the insoluble chromium hydroxide compounds. It's also important, uh, sorry, the insoluble uh, metal hydroxide compounds. It's also important to know that actually with these products here, you also get carbon dioxide gas being given off. So if you add a transition, if you add a carbonate to a transition metal and a gas has been given off, the chances are it's a three plus ion and it's not a two plus ion because you only get carbon dioxide gas being produced uh, when you um, react it with three plus ions on there and not with the ones with two plus ions on. But again, if you're not sure, um, if you're not sure why carbonates behave in this way and about the acidity of these different uh, transition metal complexes, if you just click on the link below, you can have a look at the video uh, for that one as well that tells you a little bit more. But other than that, that's it. You've got to know the shapes of the complexes. You've got to know the formulas. And you've got to know the colors as well. There's a lot to remember. You know, take your time with it. It won't come straight away in one day. But that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.